What do you desire? Perhaps you crave sensory pleasures or money and power. Perhaps you crave to be something or someone else. Or maybe you crave not to experience any unpleasant people or situations. As human beings, we seemingly have an insatiable desire for something more or something else. Our desires enslave us and create a never-ending cycle of suffering. Only if we free ourselves from such desires can the mind ever truly be liberated. This is what the Buddha believed, and you will be hard pressed to find a film that illustrates this better than 2003's Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter and Spring, directed by Kim Ki-duk, an essential and spiritual cinematic masterpiece. Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter and Spring, a film separated into five parts, chronicles the life of a Buddhist monk from his childhood into old age. Set upon the tranquil and idealistic Jusanji Pond, Spring, as with all chapters, starts with the opening of the Hermitage's doors. From the very first frame, an important motif has been established. Doors are seen not only on the exterior of the Hermitage, but the inside as well. Whilst it is very easy to walk around these doors, they are always walked through. There are clearly customs and traditions observed here, and they are a reminder of what came before them. The doors provide structure to an open space, or structure to an open mind. Perhaps these doors represent choice also, the choice to walk through them, around them, or even leave them closed. Then there are the plants that the young apprentice picked, that look identical to one another, but one has the capability to save, and the other to kill. These seemingly arbitrary choices can make enormous differences to our future. We are all a product of our choices, whether they are big or small. Every action or inaction we make permeates through time, like ripples in water. Buddhists believe that human life is one of suffering and that it is inevitable. However, additional suffering can be self-inflicted, and much of our suffering can be attributed to the attachment to our desires. Within Buddhism, three types of desire exist. Kamatanha, the desire for sense pleasure. Bhavatanha, the desire to become. And Vibhavatanha, the desire to get rid of. Each of these desires plays out during the course of the first three seasons within the film. First in spring, which shows the apprentice Buddhist with the desire to become. The apprentice's daily routine of waking up, praying, and fetching herbs is a harsh environment for a child who does not yet possess the temperament to endure such tasks. He is burdened, and as such acts out by tying a rock to a fish, frog, and snake. The rocks are a projection of his own suffering, and a longing to become like his master. In his powerless world, this is the only way he can possess authority over others. As a result of this desire, he inflicts suffering upon himself, when, due to his actions, the fish and snake perish. This would prove to be a stone he would carry for the rest of his life. Secondly, in summer, the monk has now grown, both in stature and mind. He now walks a different path down the hill and does not extend his suffering to others. This is until a woman visits the hermitage, and this time he is tested by the desire for sense pleasure, a desire he would ultimately succumb to. As he slowly descends into this realm of desire, his prayers carry no weight, and his master's words are no longer his main focus. Lacking discipline, his tasks become hurried, statues are moved, and doors are no longer observed. He has broken his traditions and customs due to his desire. This desire would later prove to be fatal, and would once again result in the apprentice monk's suffering. Monk 
Finally, in the third season of summer after returning from his exile, the now fully grown apprentice desires to end all of his suffering, and desires to be rid of himself. All of his previous actions wreak havoc on the flow of the water. As he bears the kanji to close on his face, he seeks to close his life through suffocation, an act that would be severely punished by his master. Whilst the knife can kill, it can also create. Through this art, the apprentice brings harmony to his soul. For the first time he has relinquished his desires, and eventually ends up collapsing from the work he has undertaken. His master acknowledges this, as he stops the boat to bid farewell to his apprentice. Both the hermitage and the monk are ready for closure, and tears are shed that transcend space and time. As winter begins, the cycle of the seasons draws nearer to a close. Approaching old age, the apprentice monk played by Kim ki himself now returns to repay his master's farewell. He now seeks to restore the customs and traditions he once broke. Just as the environment is frozen, so too is his attachment to his desires, and he once again finds harmony through his carving, through his art. The apprentice is now driven solely by duty and discipline, and he is for the first time completely weightless, in body and soul. It is now time for the apprentice to become the master, and fulfil his cycle. The weight of suffering he once shunned, is now fully embraced. He marches forward, without a shirt, carrying his faith in the form of the Buddha. He stumbles, his heels bleed, and yet he still keeps going. He has become a testament to the resilience of mankind. And through his suffering, there is great beauty to be found. This marks the end of the four seasons, the end of their cycle. But after winter, there is always spring, and just as the seasons restart their cycle, so too does the circle of life. A new generation who will make the same mistakes that came before, and those who must now be taught those same lessons again. For a work that has so little dialogue, it manages to say so much. Its messages transcend that of just Buddhism, and are universal. Our attachment to our desires only exacerbates our suffering. In order for us to liberate our minds, we must free ourselves of such attachment. Just as the seasons change, so must we. We must become the masters of our own minds, and only then can we truly be free. What a beautiful film.